is the buffet always messy when I do this? It wasn't messy yesterday. Hello my friends, welcome to the video. Today we are going to talk all about emergency food storage. Now the whole last year has been a wild ride. And for one of the first times in my memory, we've had some issues with finding what we need from the grocery store. And more recently with the bad storms that happened in Texas, they lost power, they lost water and couldn't leave their houses, no heat no way of cooking unless you had a generator pretty much has opened our eyes into the importance of being prepared for some kind of an emergency. What kind? Well, I'll leave that up to you to decide, but it can seem completely overwhelming to get started when it comes to food storage. However, I have great news. I have been training my entire life for situations like this. I was taught from a very young age to always have something in store in case something happened. Today, I would like to help you know where to start, what to shop for, and about how much money you might be spending to get started. And I don't recommend you just go into debt to do all of this in one day. This is going to be a slow and steady build up to prepare you and your family for a month, a couple of months, of emergency food storage. And I don't know why it's called a prepper pantry recently. Is it short for like being prepared, like prep preparation? But hey, we're gonna go with it. Let's put together a <laughs> prepper food storage for an emergency for your house on a budget. Grab your bags, grab a drink, and today we're going to Walmart. Let's go shopping. Let's start with, yes, you guessed it, beans and rice. Very few things are as inexpensive and nutritionally fulfilling and last a really, really long time as beans and rice. I hope that sentence made sense. You can choose white rice or brown rice or a combination of the two. White rice has a longer shelf life, but brown rice has more nutritional benefits. So you choose whatever works for you. And then beans combined with rice makes a complete protein as well as being tasty. Whole bunch of different kinds that you can pick from. They provide fiber and protein. I'm a big fan of the pinto beans because they're very inexpensive and are easy to flavor any way that you want. And the texture, if they're cooked correctly, is so creamy and delicious. So if you haven't learned how to cook a dried bean yet, I do have a video on that that I will leave down in the description box for you. And of course, there's nothing stopping you from purchasing canned beans as well. The shelf life won't be quite as long, but it would serve you just as well and actually maybe a little bit easier because you don't actually have to cook them. Although I wouldn't prefer to eat beans cold out of a can, you can absolutely do so. When there is an emergency, you don't wanna to have to worry about food and how many ingredients is going to need to make a dish. So what makes more sense than pasta and sauce? Honestly, not a whole lot. There are so many varieties of dried pasta, different shapes, different brands. And if you have a wheat issue, they make them out of so many things these days. Chickpeas, lentils, there's gluten-free pastas, there's higher protein pastas. They are very inexpensive and last a very long time on the shelf. The only caution I would give you is if you're gonna do this for a long-term food storage, I would not get whole wheat noodles because they're not as, I don't wanna say processed, but I guess that is the word I'm gonna use. They're not as filtered as white pasta, so there will be eggs, like bug eggs in whole wheat pasta, and they might hatch in your house, and then you're gonna have bugs everywhere. Ask me how I know that. And then when it comes to the sauce side, you know, do whatever you want. You can get the Rayo's very expensive sauce because you don't want any additives. You can get the really cheap Hunt's sauce because you think it tastes good and you don't wanna spend a ton on your food storage. Try and get one jar or can of sauce for each pound of pasta that you do and then consider the size of your family and how much you'll need for each meal. Remember your fruits and veggies and we do want these shelf stable so canned fruits and vegetables make the most sense. And I will caution you here to pick the things you like. If you don't like a fruit cocktail, then don't get it because you're not gonna wanna eat it when the time comes. Now, I personally adore peaches, like canned peaches and canned pears are some of my favorite things. I also actually really like canned papaya. If I could find a jar of just papaya, I would buy that as well. But try and go for different types of vegetables. You get different nutrients from each one. And I think probably some canned applesauce is probably a good bet as well. 
I like the little individual cups because it's gonna be easier to eat those. If your power goes out, you don't have the ability to wash dishes very well. The little cups make a lot of sense, especially if you have small kids. It's easy portion control. Just check those expiration dates. I remember that these were about one and a half to two years out. So keep an eye on them and make sure you're rotating through your food storage and replacing them every couple of years. It's the same deal with canned vegetables. So I said before, I don't particularly like canned mushrooms or mushrooms of any kind, so I'm not gonna be buying those. And actually I don't like the canned potatoes are not very good. Why are those so bad? And I'm a huge potato lover. Some of my favorite on the canned veggie side is gonna be corn and green beans. I would bypass the peas personally, but if you're into that kind of thing, get whatever you like and don't be scared to get the bigger cans. We do wanna have some vitamins and nutrients during any kind of emergency situation. This next one is really important, is you need to store a fat of some kind, whether that's an oil or a shortening or a coconut oil or an olive oil, this is gonna be so important to add flavor, help you feel satisfied when you're with a meal and give you energy. So oils can become rancid really quickly. So coconut oil has a longer shelf life than most of the other oils, including a vegetable or olive oil. So be aware of your expiration dates, make sure you're using them and replacing these often. You definitely do not wanna be stuck with rancid oil. Nobody wants that in their food. I love sugar and most of the people I know love sugar. You do need a sweetener of some kind because in the crisis situation, this can be a great comfort to you. You don't have to do sugar. You could do all kinds of things, honey, jam, preserves, syrup, brown sugar, plain old white sugar, coconut sugar. It doesn't really matter. So pick whatever you like the most and store that one. Honey is going to have the longest shelf life, which is basically forever. Honey literally doesn't go bad, which is why it's one of my favorite things to store and because honey is delicious. Next up is going to be a dry milk powder. I know that sounds weird because you probably don't drink it right now as it is, but it can be used in cooking. It's a good source of protein, calcium, and other nutrients. And if you find that you do need to drink it, you can add a little bit of your sugar and it's gonna be okay. And you can also choose from the canned milks, although they probably will not last as long as the dry milk powder. If you are not new to my channel, you know that I have a deep love for salt and spices. Salt is so important. We cannot live without it and it adds flavor to things that otherwise would be bland and it doesn't cost very much. Likewise, spices are really important as well. You want your food to taste like the food you would eat on a normal day. So why not stock up on some of your favorite spices for your food storage as well? I love oatmeal. Do you love oatmeal? I ate it so much as a kid, you can eat it in an emergency for breakfast as a hot cereal. You can make granola with it. You can make desserts with it. It's high in fiber. It's gluten-free as long as it's not processed in a plant where they process gluten. And it's cheap and stores for a very long time. Pick yourself up some oats. And hey, if you don't like oatmeal, there are other hot breakfast options. You could do cream of wheat. You could do malto meal. You can even do one of my personal favorites, which is grits. I'm from the South. I ate grits more than almost any other thing. When I was a kid, I'm team sweet when it comes to grits, but I know that's a topic for debate. You can do butter and, oh, hey, salt. We just talked about that. To make things really easy and delicious, you could pick up the packets. They're single serve. They taste really good. They already have some added sugar, so you don't really have to add anything to it other than a liquid and possibly some heat. You can go with the store brand to save a little money or wait for a sale at a regular grocery store. I love peanut butter. I love it. Who can resist the taste of a big spoonful of peanut butter? I love it because it supplies lots of calories for energy. It's a good source of protein, antioxidants, and monounsaturated fats. Be careful because peanut butter does have a lot of oils in it, which means it is more likely to go rancid in a short period of time. So you need to keep an eye on those expiration dates and rotate all the time. And if you have a nut allergy, there are so many other nut butters or seed butters that you can pick from. So if you do need to go with a more specialized and diet specific one, it's going to be a touch more expensive than if you just went with your standard Jif or Skippy peanut butter. I love a good baking mix in your pantry or food storage. This can be pancake mix, muffin mix, but it makes for such 
easy breakfasts, especially the ones that are just add water. Even the kids can make them. They're just so fun to do. And I even saw a funfetti one, which sounds really fun. Is that a bad joke? If you are gonna do pancakes, don't forget to pick up the syrup of your choice. You can do one of these cheap, very, very long shelf stable ones, or you can go for a more expensive maple syrup. Oh, hello, condiments. You do not want to forget about these because this is what makes your food fun. Pick up some barbecue sauce, get some ketchup, get your regular condiments that you are used to using to elevate those beans and rice. Throw some salsa in there, add some mayo. Whatever it is that you like, grab it and put it in your food storage. We are working on the assumption that you most likely will not have electricity and most likely won't have food in your freezer or refrigerator. So if you want some protein in your diet, there are tons of options of canned meats, chicken, pork, ground beef. Have you ever seen that before? They have seafood, tuna, salmon. You could even get Vienna sausages, which I like, or spam, which scares me a little bit. I did not grow up eating that. But there are so many options here to add protein to your diet. You can spice up those beans and rice and pasta and sauce that we picked up earlier with these options. There are a ton of brands, price points, so you could just pick whatever works for your budget and lifestyle. Having a variety of canned soups should be on everybody's list, so start writing down the things that are your favorite and add these to your food storage repertoire. They're easy, one can could be an entire dinner, they're filling and usually fairly cost effective. I actually like the Campbell's Chunky quite a bit. Um, I'm not as much of a fan of the Progressive, although you could do that as well. And then of course you have your condensed soups where you add milk or water to extend it out a little bit. Water is gonna be one of the, the most important things we talk about in today's video. FEMA recommends one gallon of water per person per day for a 14 day supply. So for my family, that would be 84 gallons of water, yikes. Now, if that seems like way too much or you're not able to store that much, maybe look into water purification systems. There's tablets, filtration water bottles that are fairly inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon that we have used for camping and hiking that work pretty well. Do not overlook the importance of water. You can actually go without food for several weeks, but you cannot go very long without water before it becomes serious to your health. Last but not least, you're gonna need some treats. In an emergency situation, these will be highly comforting to most people, make us feel good in the moment, and that can be really helpful. I would recommend against chocolate as it can be prone to melt and go more with like fruity treats and things like that. I do have to ask, are you team Twizzlers or team Red Vines? It's been a fight in my marriage for 17 years, so I need to know where you stand on that. Please let me know. And also gum is a great option. You know, gives you a little sweetness, something to do, makes your mouth feel good. We're back from Wally's World and there's a couple of questions I'm sure you're thinking about. Number one is, should you buy the dehydrated and freeze dried foods for your food storage? And honestly, the answer is that's really up to you. They are at a premium. So if you have more to spend and that brings you peace of mind, sure, I have no problem with it. I actually have some in my house myself that I picked up about five years ago. They have a very long shelf life. Mine actually came with heating bricks to cook them. MREs are a great thing to have. Of course, you must understand that anything that you do, you should only get things that you're going to eat. If you're gluten-free, stocking up on wheat berries and flour does not make sense. You despise canned mushrooms like I do. I'm not going to be buying canned mushrooms to put in my food storage because I won't eat it. So that's something for you to decide for your family. Something else to be aware of is where in the world are you going to keep everything? If you live in a small apartment, please don't buy a 50 pound bag of sugar. Let's buy sizes that make sense for you. We're just getting started here. You've got a long time to accumulate more. You might move, you might have more room later. Perhaps think about shelving in a garage or in a basement, perhaps an attic, and feel free to use storage spaces that maybe you wouldn't have thought of before. For example, you can use the top shelf of your clothing closet for water storage. It's something that I did a lot when I didn't have as much storage as I do now. I also recommend food grade buckets with oxygen absorber packets. Those work really, really well. And they worked well for me even when I lived in a warmer climate like Texas. You just have to watch out for bugs, but if everything is sealed appropriately, things like dried beans and rice and pasta and wheat last a very 
long time, like 10 plus years. And remember, we're not just purchasing all of it and hanging onto it for years and years and years. We're purchasing it and then rotating through it. You do want to eat what you store to see if you even want it at all. And then you can make adjustments moving forward. And last question for you is how long is everything good for? Of course, all of the cans of everything are going to have expiration or best buy dates on the package, but I find those to be more guidelines than actual rules. I'm going to leave you a reference down below in the box to go check out at your leisure for how long things are good for when it comes to long-term food storage. I think that's really useful information for people that are just getting started. Remember, I did not cover everything you should probably store in this video. This is just to get started. For beginners, you could really go down the rabbit hole on this topic. So we're just gonna leave it here for today. And if you have further questions about additional things that maybe you need to have on hand for an emergency situation, I would love to cover that in a future video. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.